Hello everyone, this is Alejandro Cremades and today we're going to be talking about the things that mentally strong entrepreneurs avoid. So I've had the pleasure of interviewing hundreds and hundreds of very successful entrepreneurs on the DealMakers podcast. Some of them sold their company for billions, others raised hundreds of millions, like really growing at crazy digits in terms of, of growth every year. Uh, now, there's interesting patterns here because they typically avoid certain things uh, that perhaps, you know, like others may encounter and they may fall for. So in today's video, we're going to be covering some of those different things and then how to tackle them. So with that being said, let's get into it. They avoid burnout. I mean, burnout is a real thing. It's essentially when you've overworked yourself so much over a period of time that it gets to a point where you can't really get yourself out of bed. This is something real, something that happens, especially on startups. And really what you want to do here is that you leave certain amount of time for exercise, for your family, for sleep. And now more than ever, all those different things are really what creates your productivity. So again, it's not all about work. You need to diversify your time well and never overbook yourself or overwork yourself to avoid burnout. They avoid negativity. I mean, whether that negativity is coming from you, from your thoughts, or perhaps from others, you want to, you're, again, you're dealing with an environment that there's a lot, of, a lot of uncertainty, so you want to avoid that negativity at all costs, that you're always thinking about positive, you know, potential positive outcomes, because you've had a lot of people that made the sacrifice to really jump into this initiative to really help you out. So all those super successful entrepreneurs, they knew no matter what, no matter what tough time that they were going to go into, maybe they were running out of cash, maybe they had some days left of being able to survive, and they actually knew that they were going to do whatever it took to make it happen without really getting in, in their head, without really getting in their own way, and just thinking always positive about that potential outcome that they could visualize that they could actually accomplish. They avoid others from influencing emotions. The thing is that as an entrepreneur, you're always going to hear the word no, whether that is from customers, from investors, from potential employees that you're looking to recruit. That's okay, it's a numbers game. You need to keep it moving. At the early stage, in, in, in terms of rounds of financing that startups do, they're gonna receive many times, hundreds of times the word no until they get to that yes, to that yes that really made a difference. And in some instances, I mean, I've seen companies that are valued today at five or even $10 billion, and those guys before, or gals before they raise their first round of financing, they actually receive like 300 rejections. I mean, it's not a joke. It's, it's, you need to be out there, you need to get out of your own head and not let those em emotions really influence you, really take you down. You need to get back on the horse and you need to continue moving forward. They avoid having people control their time and agenda. Those super successful entrepreneurs, they have learned how to say no, because there's going to be many, many instances where they're going to invite you to certain things, where there's going to be a potential partnership being offered, that those are, in the end, distractions from your business. You need to say no, and you need to say no a lot and a lot and a lot of times. They avoid blaming others. Look, you're gonna fail multiple times as an entrepreneur. And in the end, when you're the founder, when you're the CEO of the business, it's your responsibility. It doesn't matter if someone else did it. You were the one that hired that person. You were the one that was accountable and responsible for that individual because you are essentially at the top of the organization leading it. So with that being said, stop blaming others. It was your own mistake. That's it, keep it moving. They avoid fear to rule. This is another one because especially when, you are deal, when you're doing deals, whether it's getting your company acquired or raising financing, you're going to be scared of, of losing that potential investor, of losing that potential acquirer. So don't be 
afraid. Don't be scared because here's the thing. If plan A doesn't work, you need to also have plan B, plan C, plan D. And really, there's not a single way to get there. There's multiple ways. And successful entrepreneurs know that. So they are completely unattached to the outcome. They know that whether that party is going to work or not, there's going to be another one. And they're going to keep moving forward regardless. They avoid perfectionism. Look, especially during the early days, when you're all about bringing that product or service to market, you're not trying to launch something perfect. You're just trying to launch something that works. And the same thing happens when you're trying to roll out a new feature, a new initiative. You just want whatever is minimal that you can put out in the market so that you can start to think and to process all that data on how people are behaving with it so that you can continue to iterate and to optimize it to actually make it better. So that's why you need to avoid perfectionism. And rather than having perfectionism in place, up your listening towards being able to understand and listen to data because that is going to guide the right direction towards success. They avoid doing it all on their own. I mean, this is a really big one. Some of the biggest founders that I've ever seen are those that are great at delegating things. So first, rather than just delegating right away, first they understand it themselves, and then once they know how it works, what needs to be done, then at that point when they can no longer do it themselves, they give it to someone else. But when they give it to someone else, they have a clear understanding of how that works, and that frees them up to really go ahead in another direction to really tackle whatever is next. They avoid indecision. What this means is essentially that you have a democracy in the business where nobody is making decisions, where everyone is chit-chatting and they have a vote and whatever and nothing gets done. Or maybe they're waiting too long to just, to just have all the information to make that decision because at that point it's going to be too late. So the ones that are super successful are those that they can just grab whatever data is available to them and make a decision right away. So I would love to hear in the comment section what are some of the other things that you've seen those successful entrepreneurs do and then also avoid. And then also make sure that you like the video so that they also subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on any of the videos that we're rolling out every week. And take a look as well at the fundraising training, which is the program where we help entrepreneurs from A to C with everything related to fundraising. There you'll find live Q&As, agreements, templates, a community of entrepreneurs helping each other. Uh, and again, I think that you will find tremendous value in it. So thank you so much for watching.